Today we're joining Performance Center's Tony Mealy at the Wild Country Outfitters Ranch in northern Utah as he takes on his first elk hunt. I was in Utah here hunting the same ranch last year. They've got a lot of great animals on it and you know there's probably not a better elk herd in the area uh, than this, than this herd that's right here. So opening morning we get to the area we're going to hunt, uh, get out of the truck, first thing we hear is bugling and I mean it's like they are tearing up the airwaves out there. It's unbelievable. David knew the area real well. Uh, you know, he's hunted it lots of times before. He knew where he wanted to go. He, he said, what we gotta do is get the wind in our favor. We're gonna jump off this embankment and go down, get to the bottom. So that we can circle in and, and really start looking and picking apart every animal to make sure it's the right animal for us. We had a couple of cows come up into the field there, looking right at us. I mean, you know, they, they didn't know what, they couldn't get our scent. They really didn't know what we were. They weren't spooked at all. Dave uh, called a couple cow calls, you know, calm them down, and that's what they did. They just milled around for a little while. Wasn't long after that, the first bull comes in. Wasn't an old enough bull to take, but we did have a good time with him. You know, Dave called to him, cow called to him a few times, and the guy just come right up to us. Could have been more than, I'll bet you, I don't know, 40 yards. So we worked our way a little bit more to the right and, and down to the bottom of the canyon and we came across this five by six and he's just tearing up a tree. We looked at him, beautiful bull, perfect age category as well. Tony decided that he would pass at that time, which is wonderful. He wants a, a six by six and we're gonna please that. I'll tell you what, it's a really good day today. A lot of encounters this morning. The weather's perfect, couldn't ask for anything better. We started out this morning, we had bulls right here on the ridge. And we did the right thing, we just watched them, we didn't bump them, and then we found plenty of elk to look at. Yeah, probably took about a 20 mile hike today. We got, you got your exercise, that's for sure. Yeah, let's go <laughs> back, we'll grab a bite and yeah. get ready for, for a second shift. Sounds good. While Tony and David head back to the Wild Country Outfitters Ranch for lunch, let's learn more about the Performance Center M&P 10 and 6.5 Creedmoor rifle that Tony's using for today's hunt. Hi, this is the Performance Center M&P 10 and 6.5 Creedmoor. I'd like to talk about some of the features of this rifle. It's got a heavy barrel, 20 inch, Troy, free float fore end. It's got a Magpul buttstock as well as a Magpul grip. It's got a Performance Center two-stage trigger in it, Picatinny rail, and on the end of it, it's got a Gemtech suppressor. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about suppression. You know, Hearing Safe is rated at 140 decimals. This particular unit gets you down to about 138. Overall length, a little over eight and three quarters. Diameter is about inch and a half. Five by 24 direct thread, 14 and a half ounces weight. You know, more and more people spending time in their range as well as hunting really appreciate the fact that you can shoot suppressed. 48 states in the union right now allow suppressors to be used. If you're out hunting, it doesn't interfere with all the other game animals. If you're on the range, it's just that much more comfortable for you while you're out shooting. You might want to think about shooting suppressed in the future. So Dave decided in the afternoon we're going to a little bit different game plan. He's got another area he wants to take us to. Uh, we're going to set up on a ridge, really glass that ridge. Uh, listen to calls, try to get some looks at, at some animals, and then we'll try to set up on something if we come across it. A couple of cows come through with a calf. They walk their way up and into the woods. Saw a smaller bull come out on the top, and he starts working his way down towards the water. At first, you know, it looked like a pretty good animal, but Dave said, nah, it's just a little bit too young, and that's not something we're going to be able to take. And next thing we know, we see up, we look up. We, we, we still got this small bull. He's down in the water drinking and this larger bull starts working his way out and Dave says right away, hey, this is something we ought to take a good look at. He's a good bull. You want him in one? He's a good bull. Yeah. You, know, you want to look through the scope on him or you want to? Why do it from 300 when you can do it from 200? So we moved our way down you know, to our right a little bit. We want to just get a little bit better set up on this, this animal. Probably 168, 170 yards at that point. This is our guy right here. I just want to give him a little bit out of that bush because I got right the vitals are covered with sticks in it. I'm going to call him. Let's see if I can pull him out to look, okay? The animal would turn around, look up at us. He's interested to see where this cow is. I want to get a good opportunity on the animal, but we also want to make sure the animal's treated fairly too. Stuff's 
still just can't get a shot and he decides well it's time to mosey on back to the woods and that's just the direction he headed we figure it's only a matter of time he's calling the yardage out he's at 200 he's at 220 he's at 300 and he just keeps walking 357 going away dang that was awesome though i just didn't want to take that quarter inch shot like that good call and Tony and I just kind of had a little sigh, like, whoa, is that it? But not to be discouraged. There's a lot of elk in the area. They're still bugling and carrying on. We decided to be patient and see what else transpired, what else came to water. So it wasn't long after. We got another bull coming in. We're taking a look at that. Guess what? Too young, too small, just not going to happen. Gives us a great shot opportunity. If that could have just happened with the big one, things would have been a lot better. As we're watching the younger bull, I look up and see another bull coming back down the chute. Tony's coming in. That's our same bull. That's the bull. Range? 178 right there. When Dave says the bull is back, I'm thinking to myself, the odds against this happening again is just you know, astronomical. It's probably a half an hour later, he's walking right back down into the water. This time, things are a lot different because the way he's working in, He's going to take that turn into the water, and we know we're going to get a vital shot. OK, can you stop him? Nice hit. That is a heck of a bull. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Beautiful. I feel elated. I mean, you know, it couldn't have gone better. A great shot, great broadside shot. That's, that's just what you want to do. Like I said, you know, you want to take an ethical shot. And he presented a beautiful shot for us, and that's what we did. Oof, he is a monster, huh? Yes, sir. And that's what it's all about. Man, I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more excited. This was really great. Came in, came in the first time. We really couldn't get the shot I wanted, so I passed on it. And uh, I don't think it was half an hour later he came back. And he's beautiful, I mean. You couldn't ask for a better animal. Well done. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure to get to know Tony and to understand his ethic. Treat the animal with the utmost respect. Make sure the shot is ethical. Make sure it's a beautiful shot that the animal doesn't suffer. You know, I've hunted a lot of different animals, you know, Africa, game in the, in the United States, deer, mule deer, whitetail, but elk, that's just the, the pinnacle of, of hunting, really. If you ever have the opportunity to do it, that's what you really want to do. This was a great hunt, a lot of animals. If you get the opportunity, get out and do it.